What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. Today we have a video for movement in Battlefield 2042. This is really going to up your game if you watch this full tutorial. It has some basic stuff if you're very new to Battlefield 2042, but it has also some stuff for the advanced players if you've not fully got your movement down. After this video, you will know how to move faster in this game, how to bunny hop, how to make the slide jump work and all that stuff and when to use it as well. I'm doing this video with a controller cam. It is good to know a quick uh, intro to the controller I'm using. It is the Edge controller. Um, this uh, tutorial, however, is still very usable for normal controller players, keyboard and mouse players, Xbox players. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but just so you guys know what I am using, um, I have Crouch on R3. That's going to be a big one. Uh, normally, this would be on Zero, uh, but I have ni Knife and Red there, or Circle, I mean. And I have ju Jumping on the back button. Uh, normally this would be on X. Uh, I'll try and use the movement as much with the basic setup as this will probably be most uh, relevant to the people that are watching right now. Uh, however, I know that I'm using a edge controller so sometimes you'll see me jump and you're like, why is he not pressing the X button? That is the reason why. Hopefully this video is really useful and let's get right into it. So one of the basic things that I get asked a lot is why it looks like I run so fast, which is a big part of movement in this game. I unfortunately do not run faster than anyone else. There is a little bit of an optical illusion in FPS shooters. This is not just Battlefield, um, but uh, well, in this game, there's a big difference. So right now, it might look like I'm running very fast to you if you're running a low field of view. I'm gonna put a timer on the clock right now. I run from the end there to here. I'm gonna run back right now and you will see something uh, noticeable when I change a certain setting. This is a setting that makes it look like you run faster, but you actually don't. So you go to uh, display settings, you have your field of view. By default, I believe this is set to 60 or maybe even lower. Uh, we're gonna run it at, at 55 right now. Right now, it's gonna look like I run a lot slower than the first time I did this. That's because I run a lower field of view. However, the time should be close to exactly the same as I did before. This is a little bit of an optical illusion you get when you hire your field of view. Um, this will also create the illusion that your movement is just a lot faster and a lot more fluent. That's why I kind of like it, but in fact it doesn't really change anything and the movement should be the exact same. So that is why it might look like some streamers uh, you watch run a lot faster than others. Uh, that's because their movement is uh, not faster, but it's their field of view that's probably higher than yours. Also, there's another thing to notice. I'm using the specialist Meke right now, which is the one with the grapple hook. You can uh, latch onto things and stuff like that. There's an extra ability with Meke and that, is ha that it has a faster tra strafing speed. So watch, if I'm gonna go like this, it might look faster than what you're uh, used to and that is literally just an extra perk for McKay. This is a big thing in movement. You want to be able to strafe and it can help you out a lot. So that's why a lot of uh, these high aggressive players you'll see use McKay because they can strafe a lot faster. Which pretty much means you can move faster while you're zoomed in. Uh, this will allow you to ADS around corners but it will also allow you to move uh, while shooting someone. Uh, and it might be harder for them to hit you while it is for you to hit them. So you can strafe and shoot at the same time a little bit faster. If you use any other specialist, this will not work. Alright, so now we're gonna get into the juice of the video. Uh, we're gonna skip the normal jumping stuff and normal sliding. This is stuff you should just learn on your own and you kind of know this movement. There's jumping, there's sliding. Um, so this is something you should probably just practice on your own if you have not really mastered sliding and jumping. There's not really tips to be given uh, too much there. Uh, and I want to kind of uh, make this video as interesting as possible. So we're going to go into the combos right away. Uh, we're going into the first basic one, which is a slide jump, which will look like this. It's good to know I have crouching on R3, as you can see on my controller, my camera focus. If I tap this button, you can see it crouches for me, what means if I run and I hit that button, I slide. Now the first movement I want to learn uh, to or teach to you guys is the slide to jump. It's very basic, so what you do is you slide and at the end of the slide you can jump. You can kind of do this faster as well, like as soon as you go into the slide you can jump. Um, and as you can see right there is I go quite a bit fa uh, further. So I'm going to try and time this correctly, so I'm going to jump as soon as I kind of hit this imaginary line. So first we're going to just jump. I go right here. 
So the bullets disappear pretty quick in this game mode. Uh, we're right there. So now I'm going to slide and jump. You see, I was somewhere there, I believe. Now I'm here. So you see the jump is a little bit boosted. And this is because as soon as you slide, you hit the jump button. And you kind of create this boosted movement. Now how I like to use this is if I know there's a player around the corner. So we're going to use this AI player right here. If I know there's a player right there and I want to make as big of a movement as possible, uh, this will make it harder for the player to track me. Um, is I like to use this little slide and then I jump right away. So again, we slide and we jump. As you can see, if the player would be aiming right here, he would have to aim all the way there to uh, adjust to my movement. And if I know he's already there, it makes it a lot harder to get his aim on me um, as soon as I'm there. So we're going to slide, jump. And you can see how far I am away from the tank. Now, if I would just jump, this would work as well perfectly. He's going to respawn. Uh, but you don't make the movement as far as possible. So it's a little bit easier for the enemy team or the enemy player to track you instead of slide jumping. That's a very basic uh, first one. You don't have to slide all the way. If you slide all the way and then you jump, you can see you lose all the momentum. So you don't want to wait too long with jumping. Uh, it's better to like do it as soon as possible. So slide jump. And we're going to go in and slide jump. You want to get that down, that movement down. Slide, jump. You can see how far you go. If I do it wrong, you see the movement instantly stops and your jump doesn't have any momentum going. We're going into the next one, which is uh, pretty much a advanced movement from the slide jump. It is a jump, slide, jump, which I like to do if I want to be as unhittable as possible, pretty much. Uh, so instead of just sliding and jumping, you want to jump, slide, jump. Um, this is just a little bit of an extra movement. It is not much more useful than just sliding and jumping. However, this creates just a little bit of a harder target uh, for you to hit. So if there's a player trying to shoot you and you're trying to uh, kill him, if you're getting shot from behind, this is kind of a movement you can use um, to make it harder for them to kill you. So what you will do is you'll jump. Once you're in mid-air, so once you're in mid-air, you already hit the crouch button or the slide button. So you run... You jump, mid-air you're going to hit crouch, so you want to do this. Jump, crouch, and you see that it will slide. I don't really have to do anything after slide, so I'm going to jump. I'm going to pretty much let go of my controller. So jump, slide, and you see it will slide. That, that movement will all be like automated. Now as soon as you hit the ground, you want to jump again. So we got that jump, crouch, and now we're going to hit jump as soon as we hit the ground. Jump, crouch, jump. You can see it's a little bit of a weird movement. Uh, I kind of wish I had a third por uh, person uh, view on this, but you can pretty much tell that it's going to be a lot harder to hit me. So you jump, slide, jump. Uh, didn't do it correctly there. Jump, slide. And as soon as you hit the ground, you can already start jumping again. Um, if you want to change direction, this usually uh, slows down your movement. It won't always. So I like to let go of my uh, movement button, as usual. So I jump. That's why you see me take my thumb off if the camera wants to focus. Uh, you can see me literally take my jump off, uh, my movement button off. So this movement is all created on its own. So we're going to do it again. Jump, crouch, jump. And jump, crouch, jump. You can see how much movement I'm generating without even hitting my actual uh, movement button. On to the next movement, it's kind of a basic one and it is a little bit uh, specific for certain situations but I use it a lot more uh, than I think myself usually. Um, which is just the, uh, the jump into a slide but from a certain height. So what will happen is when, I'm, uh, when there's a player right there and he knows what I'm doing so I'm going to jump down. Is I'm trying to shoot him and I don't make any movement right now because I have to focus on shooting him. However, what you can also do... And this is a movement that's going to be extremely hard to track for the enemy player. Is you jump. So in case there's a player. You jump. Mid-air you hit the crouch button. Um, what, what's important for this is you have to be running before you jump of course. Um, so if there's a player right there. You're going to be running. You, you jump. And then you hit crouch mid-air. What we'll, we'll, we'll make this do is I'm going to literally let go of the controller right after. It's, it's going to make me slide on the ground. I'm going to jump crouch. You see, it makes you slide. 
if in case there was a player right there, it's gonna be super hard for him to track me. So you can literally do, go like this. This is a movement that is very unpredictable and hard to track. However, if you do this from too high, so we're going from here. So this is where you need to know the game very well for. From here, I'm gonna start, start taking fall damage. So I could do the same. So I'm gonna run, jump, crouch. It doesn't do anything because I take fall damage. So this only works from certain heights. It only works from here. So jump, crouch. You can do it from these little crates. Often I'm on these little crates. You jump and you crouch. And you can try and shoot someone. It's important to know that as soon as you start ADSing while you hit the slide, it's gonna stop your movement. So if I'm gonna go like this, it stops the movement. Even though I hit crouch right there, it stops the movement. So you wanna stay at hip fire for this if you wanna make this work. Um, and I, what I usually like to do is I like to start ADSing at the end of the um, uh, at the end of the slide, or I just go for a hip fire kill like that. So the next movement we have here is the bunny hop, which is the, in some ways a very basic movement, but I think it's very necessary to master in Battlefield 2042. Uh, it's very known in Call of Duty, especially. I think that's where it comes from as well. You cannot really do it there anymore. However, in this game, the movement can be superior if you wanna take out enemy players. Uh, what the bunny hop allows you to do is it keeps you moving while you can shoot back on the enemy player Which pretty much means that it, the enemy player can have a very hard time shooting you uh, While you are making this unpredictable bunny hop movement that makes you a very hard target So to get an advantage in gunfights or to make your movement as unpredictable as possible or as hard to track You kind of want to be knowing how to do a bunny hop All you have to do is you jump and as soon as you hit the ground you jump again we're gonna do it again, jump and jump. Now there is a problem is you can see the second jump doesn't go as far. You can do this uh, like three or four times in a row. You can see the, the movement keeps coming. I'm not using my movement stick at all. Um, however, you can make this a little bit faster if you use the slide jump. So I'm gonna slide. The bunny hop now is a little bit more, it has a little bit more movement going, a little bit more momentum. So we're gonna go again, we're gonna jump 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 now we're gonna do it with a slight jump so what you want to be doing to create more movement is you want to master that slight jump and then it goes a lot faster there's quite a bit of a difference uh, so this is why you need to you kind of master that slight jump first before you get into bunny hopping bunny hopping the basic movement is very simple uh, you kind of just have to get the timing down now here's where the difference is between normal controller players uh, versus keyboard players and uh, advanced controller players, let's say, with the back buttons like I am using. I got jump right here, as you can see. So what this will allow me to do, we're gonna, this red, this red uh, door right here, that's the enemy. So we're gonna try and shoot him. I'm gonna play like I'm using a normal controller right now. Um, this is still very, very usable movement if you're using a normal controller. It is just not as useful um, if you would be using a controller edge or just keep it a mouse. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna jump. And as you can see, I'm, if I wanna hit the red door, I'm gonna have to switch between aiming and jumping every single time. So you see, it's hard to stay on that red door. Now we're gonna use it with the uh, back button. You see, I can very smoothly stay on target because I'm only jumping with the back button and I can keep my thumb on uh, on target pretty much. And the good thing with bunny hopping is you keep your momentum even if you're ADSing. That is a big difference uh, why you kind of want to be learning bunny hopping. So you can shoot your player while ADSing, which you cannot do with sliding because it stops your slide movement. And this is definitely a movement you want to be uh, knowing how to do. The timing can be a little bit weird at the beginning, um, but it's very, it's a very useful movement to know. So again, you jump, you jump. Well, you don't have, even have to do that first jump. I just really like to do it. You jump, slide, jump, and then just jump, 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 jump until your movement kind of stops. Jump, jump, jump. There you go. We're gonna go again. So we're gonna jump, slide, jump, jump. Okay, so jump, slide, jump, 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 
jump. That's kind of what you want to be doing. Don't like forget about the aiming and all that stuff. Just slide, jump. You want to get really get the timing down. You don't have to do anything else besides hitting that jump button. So that's how you do bunny hopping. These are the most important movements that you should practice and try and get down. Uh, try these in a bot lobby. You can play solo cop versus AI and uh, practice your movement right there. Hopefully this video was useful. Let me know if it was. Please drop a like. If it was, uh, leave a comment down. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.